Let's continue to unpack the President's address for you now. He has extended the national state of disaster uh, until the 15th of December. Last night, Cyril Ramaphosa urged South Africans to please continue to adhere to health regulations to avoid a second wave of infections. He's also warned against large social gatherings and parties, especially as the festive season approaches asking that South Africans not let their guard down. Now, the total number of COVID-19 cases in the country is uh, just at over 742,000. Well, and this is new. We've just now reached the 20,000 mark of the people who have died of the virus that emerging in uh, the health minister's update on social media overnight. Now, Professor Linda Gale Becker is director of the Desmond Tutu HIV Center at the University of Cape Town. She joins us now live. Professor, good morning. Thanks very much for your time this morning. Uh, some strong words from the president there last night. He says he's seen some disturbing images on social media. Perhaps a reminder what people needed to hear. Yes, I think so, Michelle. I, I see a sort of shift to handing over responsibility to each and every South African. And I think that's the right move. We have to each take this on as individuals. Um, and rather than have the regulations sort of foisted upon us, I think it really is up to each one of us now to step up and, and take responsibility for our own health and well-being. Mm. I think not a lot of people agreeing that that is the right way to go. You know, if I look at the responses from not only political parties, but ordinary South Africans as well, the issue around opening international borders and again, alcohol sales, going back to pre-lockdown uh, levels, two big, big issues, big touch points when we look at how infections do flare up. Yeah, I think you're right, Michelle. It's a, it's a really difficult balance. I can see why the president is struggling with the fact that we're also facing an, econ you know, an economic meltdown. And obviously, people's ability to travel is carefully linked to that. One could argue maybe alcohol less so, but I think he's also trying to balance uh, the mood of the, the country, trying to keep people's buy-in. Um, you know, I've worked in HIV for 30 odd years now, and, and we faced exactly the same issues there, trying to get people to sort of come along with public health uh, interventions it is a difficult thing. Uh, and, you know, I, I can see him really trying to balance uh, you know, enough of, of uh, uh, a heavy hand, as you've put it, but not so much that he loses the hearts and minds of, of the citizens that he's trying mm. to actually safeguard. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, 230 days into the lockdown, we're talking about COVID-19 fatigue being a huge issue now as people are still being urged to take those non-pharmaceutical interventions. And again, the president, as you say, trying to manage this juggling act of lives over livelihoods. Yeah, I think he put it brilliantly in that regard. And, and you know, I think he's appealing to us, um, and I'm hoping, you know, every South African will be aware of that. Those non-pharmaceutical interventions seem difficult, but actually they're not. You know, they, you, you just need to be aware. The Japanese put it beautifully, the three Cs. We've got to avoid crowded spaces. We've got to avoid close contact. We've got to avoid closed rooms, you know. And if you find yourself in those spaces, then at least be wearing a mask, um, you know. And, and so that, that can be applied to our lives. And we're doing that for ourselves and for our loved ones. I think, you know, if we can keep that foremost, uh, we can also enjoy our beautiful summer, uh, as he suggested, you know. So we're lucky in that regard. I think the other thing that gives us hope here is we've had good news this week that a vaccine is feasible. So I think there's a feeling that there may be a light at the end of this tunnel as well, which, which obviously helps in terms of how long everything is taking. Yeah. And I mean, Professor, if you, if you look at the second wave that is now sweeping through many parts uh, of Europe, um, you know, experts even in, in those particular countries talking about looking to Africa for how the continent has managed the virus. Yes, we've lost an incredible amount of lives in South Africa, more than 20,000 now, which is just is so difficult for the mind to even comprehend, you know, all of those families affected by the loss of, of a loved one. But if we look at the numbers we're seeing in Europe and in the U.S., would you still say that we have done a good job? Yeah, you know, I think 
Particularly in South Africa, there was a real effort to um, to move uh, to 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 try and understand what was going on. I think the initial lockdown, although people um, you know found that hard after time, I think it was important at the time whilst we sort of gathered our knowledge and the troops in terms of what would be needed. I think there's more to it. I think we don't fully understand exactly what's happened in on the African continent as yep. far as COVID goes. Um, you know, and I think there's still some of that story to to be told. I think we, we, we're coming to terms with understanding the biology, the pathogenesis, and I think there may be more to it than perhaps just the transmission of the virus in a homogenous way around the whole world. Yeah. So, Prof, before we let you go, the festive season is, of course, now a very big concern for government. How do we continue to enforce the need to practice those non-pharmaceutical interventions? People want to see each other. They want to gather. Uh, they want to hug their family members who they haven't seen uh, over a very long time of a lockdown period. Where are you seeing those uh, communities perhaps around the country where social distancing has always been a problem throughout the, the, the lockdown period, but will be an even bigger challenge uh, heading into the festive season. Yeah, you know, I can see uh, the difficulties there, Michelle, but I, you know, I'm going to reiterate, remember, fresh air is your, is your friend. <laughs> so wherever you can do this, choose a picnic, choose yeah. being outdoors, choose, uh, you know, making sure that uh, those closed spaces don't exist, open windows wherever you can. Um, and, you know, help friends and family understand that if you haven't seen each other for a long time, you know, there's also uh, air kisses and ways of, of showing and expressing affection without necessarily making the close contact. So I think we're just going to have to um, hang in there for another year or so. Um, and when the vaccine comes along, then I'm really hopeful that this whole situation may in fact change so it's hanging in there for a little longer mm. um, and doing this for each other yeah perhaps the biggest expression of affection as you say is in fact doing those non-pharmaceutical things the elbow touch and so on thanks very much for your input this morning professor linda gail becker is director of the desmond tutu hiv center at uct she joins us now continue uh, to continue to pack to unpack rather what the president had to say in his address to the country just yesterday.